Good morning. Happy Saturday. Today is Saturday, November 23rd, 2019. And this is the Saturday before Thanksgiving. And um, I got to tell y'all a story about this hair. Listen, my mother started giving my sister and I relaxes when we were little girls. I was, it was before I got into elementary school. And when you grow up with your hair being straight and silky and really easily manageable, and you go from that to uh, your natural texture, better known as transitioning into natural, listen, <laughs> struggle is real. The shrinkage is real. Oh my goodness. So this is not a relaxer. I actually blew my hair out and I decided to give myself a break from all of the crochet weaves that I was wearing and um, just be intentional about doing some different treatments for my hair. So you can see I've been trimming, you know, my ends to try to make sure that I cut off the relaxer bit by bit. I would say I'm about 50% grown out. And um, I'm very curious about my natural texture. Like, you know, when I put my hands in there, when it's wet and everything, it feels really nice. <laughs> But then after I rinse the treatment out, then it's time for me to, you know, get on with dealing with the hair. It takes a lot more to get my hair straight in its natural state, obviously, than it would if it were relaxed. But um, that's a part of my journey. And I have to say, getting back to my natural hair texture, it's really inspiring me just to be organic, if you will in other areas of my life. Just, you know, this whole journey that I've been on of, um, I was talking before the last few uh, videos that I uploaded, I was talking about being authentic and I was talking about uh, self-care and taking time for yourself and me time and all those different things. And as you venture out on that journey, you will find yourself also just kind of revamping your life and the way you do things and questioning why you do them and you know even looking at your own sense of self-worth and self-value y'all see this right here y'all see this this hair is trying to be disobedient trying to get all crinkly anyway <laughs> but um my church has been doing a series on boundaries and the messages that they've been preaching at my church have right, been right in sync with what I've been speaking about with self-care and me time. That's a form of a boundary. You have to set a boundary for self-care, for self-love. You can't allow people to make you feel like you're so important to them that you have to fulfill their definition of uh, usage of your time you have to realize that you're not the one to help that person you're not that person's savior it's not your responsibility to heal the person yes you should you know give the word of encouragement or give the word of wisdom when you can as you can but you should never allow a person to make you feel like you know they can't make it without you or like if you don't comply with their expectations of you, then um, you're unacceptable. Let me adjust that just a little bit. But um, yeah, just set your boundaries, you know, understand that you have value and that you have something to give, but set boundaries. Don't let people suck you dry. Um, this is me again being transparent. Y'all hold on one second. I need to get comfortable. I'm in my room, so excuse me. Let me sit up here on this bed. So me, um, I used to allow people to suck me dry. I would literally allow people to just drain me. And it wasn't that I wanted to allow them to drain me, but it was like I felt that I had to give of myself excuse me, on a certain level in order to be acceptable or loved. And I didn't want the rejection that comes with people not being pleased with you. So I would deal with 
the exhaustion that came from giving too much. And it wasn't until I about tapped out that I realized, wait a second, they're doing this to me because I'm allowing it. <laughs> People can only do what you allow them to do to you, you know? My grandmother had a saying, and my mother is the one who taught me this. That My grandmother used to say this years ago. You need to start the way you want to end up. So if you don't want to end up in a place of allowing people to take advantage of you and to dictate your schedule, then don't start off that way. And the moment someone does something that demonstrates they're trying to cause you to step outside of the healthy boundaries that you've set, you have to stop them right away. And like, you know, in a loving way, but let them know. Mm -mm. This is your idea for my life. This is not my idea for my life. I already have a schedule. I already have boundaries in place and I will not allow you <laughs> to pull me outside of those boundaries because then what happens is, excuse me, you'll find your life off kilter. You'll find yourself cranky and tired and exhausted. They got what they wanted from you and they moved on and now here you are trying to recuperate. Mm -mm. I don't believe in that. Some people have a feeling like, you know, okay, if you're my friend and then I should be able to call you anytime in the middle of the night and you should wake up and talk to me. Listen, let me tell you my policy. The only one who should be available to you 24-7, 365 is the Lord because he's the only one who's designed to handle that kind of pressure. I turn my phone off at night. I don't allow anyone to call me past a certain time. And you can ask anybody who knows me. I love your life. But when I need time for myself, oh, my phone gets turned off. I don't allow anybody to make me feel obligated to be available on that level. I have no reason to, you know. And if I'm wrong in that area, then the Lord's going to have to change my mind and change my heart and help me out. Because, like I said, the only one who you should be able to call that late is on the Lord. Because ultimately, even if I were to avail myself at that time, what would I do? I would listen to you. I would hear you out. I would pray with you. More than likely, I would quote some scriptures to you. And ultimately, I would point you toward the Lord. Let's skip that middle part, you know. People who are wise in business, they go from the producer straight to the customer. They leave out the middleman. I'm the middleman. Let's leave the middleman out <laughs> and go straight to God. He is the one who has the answer for you. I don't have the answer. You know, if he graces me with information to help you and, you know, releases me to share it, then I will do that. But I get the information from him. He's not a respecter of persons. You know, you need to go and seek the Lord for yourself. So as y'all see, that's um, something that I feel very strongly about. I just, I decided a long time ago I was going to stop allowing people to uh, pull on me. And even back in those days when I would give more than what was comfortable, I still had boundaries. I had boundaries. I just learned that my boundaries were in the wrong places and I had to tighten up some and I had to be more restrictive with, uh, you know, what I would allow people to to demand from me or to ask of me. And I discovered a two-letter word in the English language that, uh, not just English, other languages too, that just set me free, made me free. It's the word no, N-O. And I would say it and mean it. And some people would get angry because, you know, they had an expectation. Like, you know, you were always a person that I could depend on. And when I would ask you to do something, you would do it. And now you're saying no? Mm, yeah, basically, I am. <laughs> guilt-free now don't don't take what i'm saying the wrong way if you have the ability to help someone who's genuinely in situation don't be callous don't be cold-hearted don't be mean don't be selfish don't be stubborn and refuse to help someone you can help you should help them but what i'm talking about is people expecting you expecting keyword expecting you to go above and beyond uh, the norm, you know, if someone is able to help themselves, but they'd rather suck you dry, they've crossed over a boundary. You got you got to set boundaries and stick to them. And you know what? Ask the Lord to grace you to deal with the consequences of upholding those boundaries, and He will give you the strength to stand up under it. And you know something? People will have a better respect for you and for your uh, schedule if you establish those boundaries and maintain them that's a part of self-love that's a part of self-care you know when you find yourself getting cranky and snapping at people and you know having that <sighs> that sigh of exhaustion rolling your eyes up in the in the air and just looking around like oh gosh 
You know, take a look at that. Why are you feeling that way? Are you exhausted? Are you tired? Are you giving too much? Are you not pouring back into yourself? Is your schedule the same as it used to be? Because if it is the same and you didn't used to be tired, but you are tired now, then something's different. You know, are you still plugging into God? Are you still spending quality time in his presence? Are you still reading your word? Are you still worshiping? Are you still going to church on Sundays? Are you still taking care of yourself? Are you still having that me time? Are you still doing self-inventory? Are you still repenting and forgiving quickly? Are you holding on to grudges? These are all things you need to take a look at. And these are all boundaries. I dare say forgiveness is a boundary. Forgiveness is a boundary. And the reason why I can say that is because when you choose to forgive someone, you have set a boundary within your life that prevents hurt, pain, and offense from setting up tent, setting up residence in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. There's a boundary there. You've made a decision that you're not going to harbor things and hold on to things. So, you know, take a look at your boundaries. Take a look at even your self-talk. How do you talk to yourself? How do you think about yourself? How do you speak about yourself? Like if someone were to ask you questions about yourself, about your life, about your what they perceive to be a strength of yours or a gift of yours, or if someone gives you a compliment, do you downplay it and do you act like, oh, please, you know, I got that at Walmart or I got that at Target or I've had this for years. Even if you did get it from those places, even if you have had it for years, the fact that someone saw something in you that was admirable, be able to gracefully and graciously accept a compliment. You know, and you don't have to be all deep about it to God be the glory. Yes, God wants the glory for the wonderful things that he does in you and through you. But if a person is giving you a compliment and telling you that um, your clothes are put together nicely, you don't have to be deep about that. Like, <laughs> let's not be deep, you know. You also don't want to be superficial. So, you know, you got to find the right balance for your life. But, um, yeah, that's my video for today. Um, I was sitting here like, okay, what am I going to talk about, like, I don't know what to make the video about. I've been doing my best to be consistent every week with making a post. Thank God for helping me and strengthening me. But, um, excuse me, that's a piece of gum. <laughs> I shouldn't eat chewing gum while I'm doing a video. But, um, you know, just wanting to give some practical advice about the situations that we face and even about what I'm dealing with currently. Um, and when you're establishing or reestablishing boundaries excuse me you will have to break some bad habits there will be a time of working and and uh i guess i'll say putting in some disciplinary actions that may require effort on a level that you've become accustomed to not giving and that that period of time, I believe they say it takes like 28 days to establish a new habit. And if it takes you that time to establish that habit, do whatever you have to do. Let me talk about me once again. Growing up, my mother always gave us vitamins and supplements and things to take. And at first, it was just a prescription vitamin from the pediatrician. It was a multivitamin, multimineral. They were chewable. Those were kids. Had like a great flavor. I remember those. And I looked forward to them because, you know, they tasted really good. And then when I became a teenager, we switched from those to some pills that we could take that were still multivitamin, multimineral. And I would take iron as well because I was always anemic. And even at that time, I would be sporadic with taking them, but I was taking them more often than not. After I moved down here to North Carolina... I was still taking them, but I started slacking up a little bit. People in the South tend to uh, live their lives in such a way that they don't, at least the ones I had encountered when I first came down here, they don't and they didn't take vitamins and they didn't believe in taking supplements and those kind of things. So I kind of found myself slacking more so than I had when I was living in New York. You know, I'm not blaming the South for it. This is a choice that I made. I didn't have to succumb to the norm down here, but I did. And I went for a very long period of time without taking my supplements. And I noticed on my right hand, my middle finger, the nail. Um, let me change here so I can show it to you. The nail had a split. Now, if you look at my fingers now, it was this finger, my middle finger. 
the nail was split straight up the middle going toward the cuticle area. And I could not understand for the life of me why that was happening. I was like, you know, is it my diet? Like, you know, what am I doing that's causing this to take place? And I knew I needed to take my vitamins again, so I decided to bite the bullet and just start taking them again. And as I started taking them, almost immediately, the little split and crack started closing up, but then I fell back into the bad habit of not taking them, and the split opened right back up. And I said, okay, I need to, and I didn't use these words at the time, but it really was a boundary. <clears throat> need to establish a boundary for self-care and for taking supplements and doing what I need to do to take care of my body. So I made a decision, you know what, this time around I'm going to take these vitamins, take these supplements and add to my regimen of supplements what I need to be healthy. And it has healed up and it's gone. And there were times where when it's time for me to take my vitamins, I don't feel like it, honestly. Like I take them in the morning and then I take some at night, different supplements. I take my multivitamin, multimineral once a day in the morning, but I take other things with it. So, you know, there are several pills that I have to take, vitamin D3 being one of them. I take an iron supplement. I take something for my eyes. I take um, collagen for my skin, hair, and nails. I take selenium. I take um, Chlorofresh, which is chlorophyll. Chlorofresh is the name of the product. The brand is Nature's Way, but it's an internal deodorant. So I take several different things. There are more things that I take, but that's just to give you an idea. I take magnesium, which is good to help you sleep. And it also has a stool softening effect. But why am I telling you all this? I had to set a boundary. And for that 28 days that it takes to establish a new habit, even though it was me revisiting a good habit that I had in the past, I had to reestablish that habit. And like I told you, sometimes it's like, I don't feel like it. But the thing that motivates me to take it, believe it or not, is when I think about that middle finger, that nail that had that crack down the middle for that period of time. And I'm like, well, you know something? If I don't maintain this habit and protect this boundary that I've placed on this decision to take my supplements, I will find myself revisiting that very same problem and having that split in my nail again. And I asked the question, I'm like, you know, do I really want to go back to that? No, I don't. So that's my way of saying to you, it may not necessarily be an easy thing to do. It may be uncomfortable at times because honestly, the mistake that I make is getting in my bed before I take my vitamins. Once I get in my bed at night, that's an announcement to my body. Like, you know, that's it. <laughs> the day is over. It's time to relax. But if I get in my bed and I didn't take my vitamins, I'm like, oh, man. I try at that moment when I remember to get up immediately and take them because it's easy just to say I'm not going to do it. I won't take my vitamins on tomorrow's another day. That's how I got into that bad habit of not taking them, which led to the problem. And again, look. You see how close? I'm going to bring this close to the camera. The focus is you can't see the crack because it's not there. But it was very annoying it used to get caught on my clothes it would snag and my thought was if I don't take these vitamins God forbid the day that I'm moving so quickly that I forget about this little snag and it gets caught on something and rips my fingernail thank God that didn't happen but you know that was a possibility so thinking about that I was like oh gosh <laughs> and for a while I'm gonna be honest with you I was getting my nails done I said you know what this is God's way of telling me I need to go ahead and get my nails done. How ignorant was that? I didn't even investigate to find out the reason why I had the crack. I made an excuse for doing something that I really wanted to do because I didn't really want to deal with and delve into the reason that the issue was there in the first place. And that's how we are. Sometimes we just cover up things. You know, we just say, okay, I'll just do something else to cover this up so that I can really deal with it. But you know something? I'm glad that God gave me and Lord forgive me for that mindset because that was a wrong mindset. But I'm glad that um, God gave me the insight to know what supplements I needed to take to get my body back to where it needed to be, you know. And as a result, my eyelashes are growing longer again. I have a little mascara on, but you can see my lashes getting longer again. My hair is uh, healthier. So, you know, I'm on this journey of self-care, self-love, boundaries, making decisions, having those hard conversations with myself and even with God. And, you know, it's a journey of healing. So, uh, again, just giving you a little bit of information and tidbits and insight into my journey. And I want to encourage you on yours. And I hope that you have a great day. It's raining outside. But, you know, we need the sunshine and we need the rain. So thank God for both of them. 
Y'all have a great day. I have not done a random video between my Saturday videos in a while. And maybe I will one day. I don't know. We'll see. But until then, have a great day. Ta-ta. Bye-bye. <gasps>